Uh, one of the things that I think a lot of people have assumed, and I think there was a lot of data to support that uh, over the last few decades, uh, we had made or humanity had made significant progress against malaria. Uh, you know, malaria is the number one killer of uh, human killer of I think of all time, right? I mean, uh, there was a period where malaria was basically malaria deaths a year were close to a million, a million people dying every year, every year of malaria. And and during the two uh, thousands. Uh, that came down to around uh, almost 500,000, maybe 600,000. So still a, a, a pretty high number, 600,000 people dying every single year uh, because of, uh, because of uh, malaria, because of mosquitoes. And of course, uh, the um, uh, one way to kill mosquitoes, one very effective way to kill mosquitoes used to be DDT. DDT just, just crushed them. Uh, but DDT has basically been banned globally uh, because of its environmental, supposed environmental issues. Remember, DDT was at the heart of Silent Spring, Rachel Carson's uh, uh, book on, on, uh, on the dangers of DDT and generally advocacy for environmental policies, which basically came to shape uh, the environmental movement and basically came to shape, shape environmental regulation uh, after that. But, uh, you know, nobody ever does the weighing of Okay, so yeah, DDT is pretty toxic, and a lot of toxic, and a lot of mosquitoes and other species might die. But we save, I don't know, half a million people a year from death. Children might primarily. Versus, okay, we don't use DDT, and those half a million die or a million die, and we have a more pristine environment. No, I mean, that calculation is never done because who cares about human life? It's a pristine environment that matters. But what's, uh, what's scary is that while we've had about uh, two decades of systematic declines in malaria deaths, uh, two decades of systematic declines in the appearances of things like dengue fever, yellow fever, and other kind of mosquito-borne diseases, we are now seeing a real spike uh, in um, in uh, mosquito-borne diseases and in malaria deaths, uh, back up to 627,000 uh, uh, over the last couple of years. So the last couple of years, well, this I think this data goes back to 2021. So for 2019 to 2021, a, a, a major spike in malaria, but also we're seeing malaria in places like Florida and, 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 and Texas and Maryland, uh, places where we haven't encountered malaria in a long, long time. Uh, dengue fever in Florida and France. Uh, we're seeing mosquito-borne diseases more prevalent. Of course, we had that uh, horrible Zika outbreak a few years ago in Brazil and then across Latin America and even some fears about uh, Zika in the United States. All of these are mosquito-borne diseases. We see uh, a new, uh, not new, but invasive species of mosquitoes uh, entering into areas where they weren't there before, uh, and just a general increase in uh, in the prevalence of mosquitoes. And a lot of this, so a lot of this, they say, is caused by um, uh, the fact that mosquitoes have become immune to many of the uh, anti-mosquito, uh, uh, you know, pesticides that are being used. Uh, so, uh, you know, they've evolved uh, and they have uh, strategies uh, to, uh, to evade these things. One of the big problems around that is that the, um, is that the um, World Health Organization and the CDC and other regulatory ag agencies are really, 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 really slow to approve new pesticides, new methods to mitigate mosquitoes. Now think about this. 627,000 people died of this in 2021. Over half a million people die, have been dying of this forever. Uh, over probably around a million people have been dying of this for a long, long time. You know, if you go back long enough. I mean, hundreds of thousands of human beings. You'd think that this would be what like number one on the agenda of the CDC and the World Health Organization to approve 
uh, of course, why do, we, why do we need these organizations? But given that they exist, to approve these treatments, to approve these tests, uh, uh, to approve these, uh, uh, you know, pesticides or whatever else uh, they need to do in order to get rid of these. And yet, they're slow. They're slow to do it, which is, I mean, criminal. Criminal. Millions of people are dying. Millions. And nobody seems to care. I think it's primarily because it's in Africa and, and nobody cares, right? I mean, if this was really widespread in America and Europe, there would be more action. But it's in Africa, so nobody cares. One solution to this would be to wipe out mosquitoes. Or at least wipe out mosquitoes of breeds that we know carry diseases. We know how to do this. We absolutely know how to do this. During the Zika outbreak, there was a discussion in Florida to genetically modify the mosquitoes so they would all basically die. They couldn't reproduce. We have the capacity to modify the genes of mosquitoes to kill them all. Now, many of the mosquitoes, for example, in Florida are invasive species. Why not get rid of them? Why not kill them? Ooh, Frankenstein. You can't play God. Don't mess with nature. And on and on and on and on. Right? But no, this is exactly what we should be doing. Uh, we should be engaged in a campaign to use genetic engineering to save the lives of hundreds of thousands of people a year, millions and millions of people over decades. And let's get rid of these mosquitoes. They're a pest anyway. Even if they don't kill you, they're just nasty little creatures and they don't serve much of a purpose. Uh, yeah, we'll screw up the food chain. Who cares? Um, again, a lot of these invasive species and um, nobody's going to miss them. Nobody's going to miss them. Nature will adjust to the disappearance of mosquitoes. Fine. 